Hey there, Coach Sylvie of Doe Training Systems and Bike to Body and the 16 Week Road Cycling Program. I'm coming here to tell you to go over something that I've added to our program. But before we get started, um, what I would like to do is just ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be putting a lot of cycling related uh, workouts out there and stretching and especially um, also uh, other drills and stuff on the bike. So you want to be getting those throughout the winter or your off season to apply them to your training while you're on the trainer or maybe in the outside. So thanks for that and first of all what we're going to be talking about is if you join my 16 week road cycling program locally or even if you join my virtual live version uh, not version but basically if you subscribe to my live training you'll get my 16 week training at home so check into that at that I'll put the links above and uh, with that program you get this four to 16 week cycling gym program which is pretty good it's very specific to cycling um, related exercises and I'm here to show you the exact exercises that are on the week one to four the stabilization phase so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna be running through all the exercises that are basically on this program that you'll get uh, when you join the the um, my coaching and I want you guys to know how to do all these exercises properly so you maximize them and you can then uh, you know just they'll even more enhance your cycling training in the winter so this is like more off season this is not stuff that you're gonna do in season however as you go in at the end of the um, the gym workout there is a maintenance phase that you can apply while you're in racing training phase during the summer so it is important to kind of keep up with um, your training and weight training while you're racing and cycling but not at the intensity obviously as your off season so this is the time where you really go back to the drawing board work on skills inside work on building muscle upper body core legs so that when you get on the road you're going to be you're going to implement it and you're going to be so much stronger not only skill wise but power all right so obviously you don't see this but I will be running through and explaining this workout and I'm just going to be demonstrating for you the different exercises so that once you get this you can just run through this video and make sure that everything you're doing you're doing well and with good form that is so important all right so let's get started we have our warm-up so that's basically uh, what we have here is getting on the foam roller um, or you can go on your bike really warm up the muscles like getting like feeling the muscles starting to get warm because you never want to start working out with cold muscles now what I'm gonna do here I'm not doing the full workout so but what I would do is I was either get on the treadmill, uh, pick up uh, elastic bands, skipping rope, kettlebell, something that I can definitely get my arms moving, so my legs moving, something. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just do like five little jumping jacks um, or squat jumps just to get things rolling because I am kind of cold. And then we're going to get into the first exercises, which is our core. Um, and then we're, we have, so it's fun. We have core phase, power phase, strength phase, and then our cool down. So that's part of our stabilization 
phase for the first one to four weeks, and then you move on to the next phase from you know five weeks to ten. So you got little chunks there. All right, so I'm just going to warm up. I'm just going to do some jump squats. These. All right, so I feel a little bit warmer now. So we're going to get into our core feeds. You want a mat here. The first one is bird dog. So if you do a lot of yoga, you'll know what this one is. I didn't, I had to Google it. So what we have here is 12 to 15 reps, one to two times. So you can decide how many sets you want to do. Maybe if you're just getting started, you'll do one set for the first two weeks and then move into two sets for the next two weeks. Okay, so it's two or three times a week you're gonna be working out. So we got our bird dog. So it's important, this is part of the core, right? That your core is tight and your legs are out straight. No dropping of the head, okay? It's super important to keep your neck straight and aligned. So one, you got 15, so I'll just do five, two, three, core tight, four, five, now switch, one, elbows to knee, two, three, four, and five. So it's also good for the balance. Next one is our plank. We're all familiar with that. You can either do it from your arms, straight up, your elbows, and if you're not feeling strong because we do 30 to 60 seconds, you can do it from your knees. Make sure you're not dropping your hips. You want to have everything nice and straight, core super tight. This is important for building those transverse abdominals and lower abdominals. So us women who are always like, oh, I can never tighten up these, these core muscles, the plank is what you want to be really focusing on. All right, next one is side plank. So you can either do it from your elbows, from your arms, you can get advanced, So you have one to two for 60, 30 to 60 seconds. Don't forget to switch. You'll invariably notice that one side is way more stable than the other, as well as like muscles develop a little bit. If you notice my arms, these, this one's more developed than this one. Always struggle just doing a little bit extra. All right, supine bridge. Legs down, hands down, and up. So glutes are tight, abs are tight, and you want to drop and tighten. Release, contract, release, contract. So that's your supine bridge. Then you're going to roll into prone cobra. So remember, these are core exercises, so you really want to be focusing on tightening and engaging those core muscles. Alright, so let's do that. So, you either have hands by your side, relaxed, and then up. Down, and up. And last one. So those are your core exercises. There's five of them. You run them between one and two sets and the reps are all indicated on your form. The next one is we move into the power phase. So multi plenaire hops. So this is gonna challenge your balance. And what I always say as a cycling coach when we're on our trainer is to do individual leg exercises like isolated leg, 
Um, that really helps balance out the strength in the two legs because if you've ever had injuries, whether it's quad, hamstring, glute, calf, you're going to favor one leg over the other. And in cycling, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that in any exercise, any sport. You want to be strengthening and you want to have your, your legs both be strong together so that you don't overcompensate and further injure, injure yourself. So in the gym, it's always important, one leg exercises. If you tend to, like further on in the exercises, we'll be doing like, um, you know, uh, more leg press, same, one leg, the other leg, so that they're strengthened together. Okay, so that's so important because you don't want to have one leg stronger than the other when you're out and you're trying to perform on the road, whether you're in a group or racing. Okay, so think of this as a star. We got front, side, back, side. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump forward, center, side, center, back, center side, center, switch legs, one, two, three, four, and that's your multi planar uh, hop, okay, so this one is one leg 12 to 20 times, one to two reps, or sets, so that's that one, the next one is we're going to move to chest, so we kind of roll through full body exercises. So I'm going to, all right, so chest, so we're going to move into strength, sorry, I missed that, into strength, so the wood chopper. Okay, so the wood chopper, we have all know it, like we, you can either use a cable, but what we're going to use is either dumbbells or a medicine ball. I forgot to grab a medicine ball, so hold on a second. Right around the corner. So you'll notice if you're at the gym that there are different weights. So you get two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 10, 12. Um, so you can start without or with um, a lower weighted uh, medicine ball. So wood chopper. So we have two different versions um, that I want you to go through. I'm just going to put this up here so I can see. Sorry, I did not memorize this. I'm actually going to be following this same program as everybody here. So I'm just learning it as well. And when you have the paper in front of you, it's always a lot easier. All right, so this is the first one. So we're gonna squat down, touch the ankle, and up. One, two, and you twist. Three, four, and five. So you're really twisting the core, throwing the arms all your lats on the side. Now next one. One, two, three, four, and five. So I've had an injury in my hamstring back here dating back like 15 years ago. Um, it still plagues me, so I have to be super careful and I have to always encourage you to listen to your body, okay? So if it's saying like, oh, I mean, listen to if it's like pain. If it's something like you just don't want to do it, keep going. <laughs> but to make sure you're always in alignment with how your body feels, okay? Now, the second one is a twist. So holding it out, so this is where like the weight of the ball is gonna be much heavier. You're gonna twist up on the toe. One, to the center, two, three, four, 
more. Five. Other side. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. So that's your wood chopper one and two um, exercises. Now we're going to move to. So that's like a total body one. Now you're going to move to chest. So you're going to need your bench here. And we'll just move this up a bit more. Okay, so one arm dumbbell. Now, I really encourage everybody to, once you get this program, to then move it into um, a workout book and start tracking the weights that you're going to use. Okay, so I have this. I should have said this at the beginning, but starting to track it. So this is another exercise. So I just put the exercise here, the dates, and every two weeks, you should be increasing your weight by about 5%, okay? So that you're not hanging out at the same weight forever. Because after a while, it's not doing you any good, okay? So let's do our single arm dumbbell bench Press. So you're going to alternate. So down. So 90 degree of the elbows. And you're going to power up one. contracting those abs, pulling that belly button back to the bench because you can literally work your abs throughout your whole workout, okay? So that is chest, so that's single arm dumbbell bench press, and now we're going to move to back. So basically, you've got something for almost every muscle group, which I like about this. Um, so you're going to stay on the same bench. Now, one thing I see a lot of people doing is being very crunched, okay? So when you do your, I'm just gonna move this a little bit to the side. When you're doing your single arm row, you wanna be straight, okay? Let's see if I can get that even. So, see how straight, straight my back is? I'm not like trying to, Okay, that's not right. Okay, you want to be flat. If anything, get yourself in front of a mirror. Mirrors are not to be, mirrors are to be used. They're the cheapest form of coaching and it's okay to look at yourself in the mirror because you want to make sure that you're doing stuff right. So nice and straight, core is in. I got my dumbbell, my hands at the edge, my my neck is straight, I'm not like bending my neck. Everything is straight, okay? Knee bent, and I'm powering up. One, down, two. So contract, release, three, four, and five. Switch it up. All right, same thing, back straight, core in, one. should be heavy okay when you're pulling it up if it feels light it's too light get a heavier weight okay don't stick on being light like if you have to stop and rest for a couple seconds in order to continue your set then do that okay but then you're just going to sit sit with that weight for a week or two and then it's going to become easy um, so we're going to move on to shoulders, my favorite. Okay, 
dumbbell rotation, external rotation. So I grabbed lighter weights. This is where you're going to want to get lighter weights because you don't want to, you know, rip a rotator cuff. That would not be good. So leaning. So you can do this on the floor or on the bench, but if you're going to be on a bench, so elbows in, down, and up. Down and up. Down. There we go. Let's do the other side. So even. Remember, that's my weaker side. So I really must do this. So elbow in and up. Cans. So you're going to stick with the lighter weight. Basically, this is a lateral, a lateral exercise, and you want to, it's like you're emptying out the can. So up, thumbs down, down, thumbs down, down, thumbs down. So you see that? Thumbs are down, so I'm emptying out the can. Thumbs down. Keep those shoulders back. Body nice and tight and strong. Down. That's a killer. Okay, we're almost done. Last one is the squats for legs. So it's leg squat, touch down. So single leg. So again, single leg. So single leg, touch down. One, two, three, four, five. Other side. One, two, three, four. And excellent. Great work. Now the last portion is your cool down. So active stretching. Um, maybe if you want to get on a bike to cool down, something like that. But um, you have your cool down of, you know, just stretching those chronically tight areas. So I'll show you a couple ones actually because this is so important. And there's a couple things that I always make sure that I can do. And by the way, always make sure you have water with you with some sort of electrolyte or pre during workout um, drink. So you get the most out of your workout. Okay, so actually, I'm just gonna, I don't think I grabbed that. I'm just gonna grab this band here. So ideally, you don't want a band for this, but these ones are pretty strong. Um, now, it's all about stretching those tight calves. And if you're a triathlete and you tend to run, on your toes, you, I would bet that you have very tight Achilles and tight uh, calves. And I've seen this in a lot of cyclists or triathletes that come into my program. Um, and they are toe pointers on their bikes and it's because of that. And it's so, so um, detrimental to your performance because you're missing out on a lot of power that you could be producing from actually stretching your heel down. So this is super important. So you definitely want to have like a band, but you're stretching and you're bringing it to the side. Down, other side, up, stretch that heel. 
down and out. So there you have it for some stretching. Just a couple more points about the program um, that's on the, um, the workout. You will see reps, you will see sets. That's pretty straightforward. So reps are the amount of exercise. The sets are how many of those you're going to do. Then you'll see tempo. So what is tempo? So tempo is, um, so say, you know, um, I'm just going to do, for instance here, um, a bicep curl. So one, two, three, hold it up for two, one, two, and down. So actually I'm going to use my other one, two, three, one, two, down for one. One, two, three, one, two, down for one. And then there are other ones that are one to one. So one, one, one. One, one, one. So it's a little bit more. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then it says the duration of rest. And then there's some comments. So that pretty much covers the program. So thanks, guys. And like I uh, mentioned, Please subscribe to the channel. Don't miss out on all this stuff because this is where I'm going to be putting all um, the cycling related uh, workouts. And uh, the first one is this one. So you don't want to miss out. And I'll put the links above where you can jump into um, whether you're local, check out the program, or if you're global and you want to subscribe and join us live. There's that option. And then I have a four week actual pure skills program that I'm putting together. So I'll post that later. Take care and have an amazing day. Coach Sylvie over and out.